ನಿತ್ಯಂದಂ ಪರಮಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ತ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಮಸ್ಯಾಕ್ಷ ವಿಮಲ ಅಚಲ ಸರ್ವೀಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ Nityananda, we offer our humble obeisance, our humble pranam, at the divine lotus feet of Bhagavan, His Divine Holiness, the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashivam. And we welcome all of the viewers across the world. It is at this time, every morning, No matter what time zone that we may be in, whether we are waking up for the first time or we are getting ready to go to bed, this is the time that we all gather to have the darshan of Paramashiva. A natural alarm goes off inside of all of us, millions across the world, in order to tell us to tune in to Kailasa's Nityananda TV, Kailasa TV, so that we can watch satsang at this very time for millions across the world we recognize that this is the time that we are living in and we're each blessed to be living at the same time of the avatar the embodiment of paramashiva himself and the avatar his divine holiness swami ji no matter what may we may be going through globally whatever economic or social crisis we may be going through we consider ourselves blessed to be living at the same time as the being whom we are all blessed to be able to fondly refer to as swami ji each of us 
is truly blessed living at the same time of the avatar and literally breathing the same air that he is breathing there are innumerable reasons as to why his divine holiness bhagwan shri tyan the parmashivam happened on this planet he happened to cause the next evolutionary breakthrough for life on earth he happened to cause the satya yuga once again he happened for the fulfillment of consciousness itself he happened for the entire humanity and he happened exclusively for you at the same time ultimately however in words that cannot quite be summarized either by himself or his devotees the true reason behind the happening of the avatar the happening of the avatar is nothing but pure compassion this realization will happen in you after reading and listening to the full story of the avatar of all of his gifts and his sacrifice you will journey through all the years that his feet his feet great this planet you will learn the greatest of his lessons and you yourself will realize will have the realization that brings tears to your eyes and the ultimate surrender into your mind the avatar of parmashiva happened on this planet earth just to ensure that we realize that we are also parmashiva for so many individuals still we are stuck in our patterns we have not yet realized we are parmashiva our pain and suffering are real to us this is because we are in kali yuga in hinduism a yuga is a period of time there are four yugas or eras satya yuga treta yuga dwapara yuga and kali yuga at the end of each yuga end of each kali yuga we return back to satya yuga time is a cycle not a linear one the age that we are currently in is called the kali yuga in our vedic scriptures our rishis have also gave us the solutions in the kurma purana vyasa tells us the different gods and goddesses that will bring a breakthrough in our life on planet earth vyasa reveal the undeniable truth as vyasa uvacha dhyanam param krita yuge tretayam jnana mutyate dwapare yajnam eva hurdanam eva kalau yuge brahma krita yuge devas tretayam bhagavan dravihi dwapare daivatam vishnu kalaurudro maheshwarah brahma vishnu tatha surya sarva eva kalavapi pujyate bhagavan rudras chaturshvapi pinakrudhak these verses mean vyasa said in the krita yuga or the satya yuga meditation dhyana holds as ultimate as the ultimate path of liberation in the treta yuga the path is sacred knowledge jnana in the dwapara yuga only the performance of yajna the sacred fire ritual and in the kali yuga kalau it is the path of dana the enriching offering indeed brahma is the preceding divinity for krita yuga in the treta yuga it is bhagavan ravi or surya the dwapara yuga the devata the presiding divinity is vishnu 
and in the Kali Yuga, the preceding divinity is Rudra, Lord Maheshwara. of great delusion. Parameshiva teaches that our reality is eternal, eternal bliss, but what we feel inside is distinctly opposite. This duality between what you believe and what is reality is what our rishis signify as the beginning of Kali, the mark of Kali. The accumulation of this delusion has reached the point where if humanity does not fix ourselves now, it will end up in a collapse. This is the reason for the descent of the avatar. The suffering which is being expressed, experienced by all across the nations, religions, castes, classes, and genders has accumulated over the past 2000 years. Not only humans, but animals, plants, and the earth has been affected by collective negativity. We have seen violence and vengeance, greed and exploitation, and immense boredom and tiredness. Though we may disgrace and disagree in whom we pray to, in what we eat or in how we go about, earning our livelihood, when it comes to the suffering, we have seen, heard of, and been through, there is no denying the reality. What we lack is a valid working solution. After first acknowledging that, yes, we have seen pain. Now, where do we go from here? Most often, where we look for the solution is the source of the problem. We seek solution in the institutions that we ourselves have created. The government, health institutions, and research and development universities have all shown that what they offer as a solution is only a temporary bondage over gaping wound. Solutions nowadays even create other problems like pain medication that comes with its own set of near fatal side effects. We have seen enough of this fake so-called solutions. It is time for the real, permanent, and pervasive solution that fixes the mess what we have created once and for all. This is why Parama Shiva himself 
manifests in the physical form on planet Earth to help us realize we are all also Paramashiva. The energy of Rudra, another name for Paramashiva, is the guidance of the time Kali Yuga. In our most intense struggles, he is the one we should look for, the avatar of this day and age. Shiva himself confirms this as the truth by giving his own instructions on what should be given his followed in this day and age. To Devi Adi Shikti in the Kularnava Tantra, he instructs in Satya Yuga, the golden age, the scriptures followed is Shruti the revealed and heard scriptures. In the Treta Yuga, they followed Smriti, the remembered scriptures. In Dwapara Yuga, they followed Purana, the cosmic histories. In Kali Yuga, they are to follow and live only the Agama. As we know, the Agama is the scripture of Paramashiva himself and magnifies Paramashiva's importance in the Kali Yuga. His living energy and his teachings are prescribed antidote for falling from the space of Paramashiva. The revelations from Jivanadi readings on his Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam, we'll see. Not only Paramashiva, but even the Rishis, including the great saint Agastya, had revealed the happening of Avatar in Jivanadi readings. Nadi readings is the ancient palm leaf readings where the thumb impression of a person seeking his past, present and future is used to pick up a palm leaf from an already available set of palm leaves written by the ancient sages like Agastya. The chosen palm leaf is read out to the person. Jivanadi is a special palm leaf reading that does not require the thumb impression of the person seeking the reading and the text appears spontaneously in response to the query. This particular Nadi, this particular Nadi reading refers to the avatar was spontaneously revealed to a disciple who had sought his own Nadi reading. The disciple was a resident of New Zealand and was a complete stranger to the new readers. The original Nadi reading was in Tamil. In one verse of the Nadi reading, it goes, In this world, before Nityananda was born, he made seven crore people to be born in the world. Seven crore people were born with him. After he was born, he has invited seven crore people to this world. He made them to be born in this earth. The secret of births revealed by his divine holiness, Bhagavan Paramahamsa Dhyananda. After the happening on planet Earth, Swamiji began revealing ultimate truths about birth so that hu humanity itself can be liberated. His revelations from Akashic readings on birth 
give the most powerful cognitions there is no such thing as birth exist every individual water drop in the ocean when it moves by its very innate intelligence visualizes it is born and separated from the whole when it gets rid of the very rude delusion it is called enlightenment the birth is not happening as human being understand as the separation from the source source participates completely with the part in every action in every deed in every step in every behavior in that moment in every moment so thought it's all per permeating presence so the birth is as you understand does not exist in the cosmos continuously your movements and your desires create different states of consciousness in you because because of these alternated states of consciousness like lust anger greed fear jealousy competition love feeling of deprived depression because of these various experiences and the expressions the path starts feeling it is separated from the whole the moment the part feels it is separated from the whole it claims it has taken birth birth is the beginning of the suffering as the part forgets its source existence connection and participation with the source as the source relationship is forgotten by the part the deliberate suffering become the lifestyle from the moment of birth the moment the individual consciousness feels the part is no more when the individual part realizes its mistake of remembering itself from the whole it relaxes into the whole that moment is called enlightenment remember in the form of breathing in the form of heat in the form of your body in the form of your thoughts penetrating into your system from the space the whole will continue to hold support feel be part and participate in the existence and in the part of the existence even though the part does not feel the whole is participating in your existence the source is partner part and the whole is participating in your existence the source is partner part and whole of your very existence whatever you think as the distance between the source and you it is just your thinking the distance remains zero from the beginning of your journey from and during the journey and till the end of the journey the birth has never happened as you consider your birth date the birth is your imagination day the day you felt you are separate from the whole so relax from that imagination the day is the day of your enlightenment whether the drop feels it is floating swimming drowning dissolving or disappearing the drop is always the part of the whole ocean the source exists in source so where is the question of the birth creator did not even allow your birth your birth is your independent decision to rebel against the creator against the source 
God incarnates. God gets enlightened. God plays this whole role. And God plays with himself. It is like a child playing with his own body. God is playing with his own body. It is not highest perspective. This is the only perspective. If we all realize this, we achieve this through realization. The embodiment of the universe into human form is the most conscious formation in existence. The avatar is the combination and the transcendence of every incarnation that has ever existed. For his purpose on planet Earth, he configures every muscle into every memory. Swamiji says, that like a paper toy that children make to play with, I made this body just to play with. When we choose the material with which we play on earth, we either consciously or unconsciously choose what is called as the biomemory. The biomemory is a quality associated with a specific muscle belonging to a body. When we pass on to the next lifetime, we choose from a plethora of options to make up our biomemory in that particular lifetime. Understand, the incarnation has brought certain biomemories to do the mission that they have come down to. He has also programmed these biomemories automatically to replace themselves and replenish themselves based on the need for humanity. From whoever he has taken the various biomemories, all of them are his own past life. Being an avatar means clearly remembering, consciously picking up all the best qualities of your past incarnation, assuming the body and radiating those qualities. All of us are also avatars, but you picked up the memory from the wrong sources. You thought that maybe eating like a buffalo is the best life and sleeping is the best thing. So you picked up all of that. Actually, when you sleep or when you eat, you can see the quality of many animals in you. When you're eating, when you're having sex, you're sleeping, or when you're angry, you will see many qualities of animals in you. You will see the only thing that you did you did not pick up these qualities consciously and after picking them up, you did not take birth consciously. This is a low frequency decision. Many a time you decide without having the side effects, without knowing the side effects and after effects. And without having the courage to go through the side effects and after effects. This is where the problem is. You don't think, what will be the side effects and after effects of the decision in my life? You just jump through that fantasy. But you should decide only after knowing the side effects and the after effects and have the courage to go through the side effects and after effects, which you may not know until you experience them. You should have two things. One, your intellect should be stretched to its extreme, to its limit of what all can happen. You should start to have the courage that even if something happens beyond your intellect's reach, you are ready to go through it. Then you are an incarnation. All of Swamiji's ways of relating to humanity, that Biomemory, Swamiji took from Meenakshi. The whole administration, the way Swamiji handles people, the way he trains people, the way he elevates people, is all from Meenakshi. His concepts about human society is from Meenakshi. 
his concepts about his responses in human society is from 2000 years earlier that is why it is a time tested full true response the body language and the verbal language of swamiji is from arunagiri yogeshwara administration of strategy planning from meenakshi these are all small tiers smaller layers of the making of an avatar swamiji has also programmed these very bio memories to automatically replenish themselves based on the need of the humanity so when swamiji assumes the current body in which he is living one big chunk of the bio memory was derived from meenakshi her response the way she ruled the way she administered the way she created and maintained the whole kingdom and the way she waged the war all these are meenakshi strategy the way she responded is exactly how samji responds madurai meenakshi's cutting personality is transparent in samji he is not a new age guru with a mission of peace and love he does not speak slowly he speaks strongly wielding the power of his words with just his very breath often times his incarnation is more like a strategy of for war than anything else war against the terrors of mankind of depression boredom tiredness while once his enemies might have manifested in the human form like demons or asuras of the epic stories of yesteryear now they have transcended into the ideological form the non existent existence made powerful only by the psyche of the human mind the royal voice of meenakshi conquering the eight directions of the world rings from his very own voice even though the setting has changed completely it was not just meenakshi parashakti but also sri krishna's bio memory that samji took from before coming down to the planet earth and many other incarnations all the great incarnations including sri rama sri krishna madurai meenakshi came down to this planet to execute a divine purpose like samji and for all of them their birth is an extremely significant part of their very happening sorry for the technical glitch uh, so i would now i'll share the incarnation the seventh incarnation of lord vishnu lord rama before he was born there was an evil demon ravana with remarkable powers troubled many gods and holy saints from performing holy rituals he had 10 heads and 20 arms ravana was blessed with a boon from lord brahma that no god can kill him that protected him from all the gods then lord vishnu then decided to defeat and kill ravana but taking a human form lord rama is considered to be the seventh incarnation of lord vishnu 
Lord Rama is known to be the oldest deity worshipped in human form. As Lord Rama was born in Treta Yuga, and it is believed that Treta Yuga has ended 12 lakhs 96,000 years before today. In addition to Lord Rama in Treta Yuga, Lord Vishnu incarnated as Vamana and Parasharama, the four Yugas are, as we already saw, the Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, and Kali Yuga, which spans around thousands of years. Lord Rama was named by his the Guru of Raghuvamshis, the Surya dynasty, the Maharshi Vasista. Rama, the first letter in Sanskrit, Ra, means that which is radiant, and Ma means myself. So Rama means the pleasant to myself. These letters provide the strength to the mind, body, and soul. It's mentioned in the Mahabharata that once Lord Shiva said that reciting the name of Rama thrice gives the grace equal to the pronouncing the names of thousand deities. So now let's see how Rama was born. Thousands of years ago, there lived a king named Dasharatha of Ikshvaku dynasty, ruling the kingdom in the beautiful city of Ayodhya at the banks of a river Sarai. He was generous and intelligent and this king was loved by his people. He had three wives, Kausalya, Kaikeyi, and Sumitra. But he had one sorrow. The only sorrow for him is he had no children, which made him always worried and sad. One day, the king called his Rajaguru, Vasista, and conveyed his sorrow to him. Vasista said that, consoled Ram. Dasharada said that, you are going to have four sons, and advised him to perform Putra Kameshti Yajna. Under the guidance of the great Rishyasinga Muni, Dasharada and his ministers started all the arrangements for the Vedic ritual, and the city, the city of Ayodhya, was decorated grandly. King Dasrath followed all the rituals and performed Putra Kameshti Yajna. At the end of the fire ritual, a divine form appeared in the from the sacrificial fire, holding a vessel of divine sweet in his hands. He gave that to Dasharada, and Dasharada gave that divine sweet to his three wives. After 12 months of this performing the Putra Kameshti Yajna, in the month of Chaitra, a day which was neither hot nor cold, Winds blew softly, and forests were full of beautiful blossoms. The rivers flowed swiftly and sang with joy. The sun, moon, and stars gracefully waited while the queen Kausalya gave birth to a son named Rama, with all the divine attributes. Following that, Queen Kaikeyi gave birth to Bharata and Queen Sumitra to two sons, Lakshmana and Shatrugna. So King Dashrada was very happy and overjoyed with the birth of his four sons. Not only the royal family celebrated, the news spread all over the city and everyone began to celebrate the arrival of the future king and the future god Rama. 
the king distributed gifts to his citizens happily and the four brothers grew up with a mutual affection now let us see the another incarnation the eighth incarnation of lord vishnu the birth of krishna lord krishna is the eighth incarnation of lord vishnu is considered as the purna avatar the god himself the god decided to incarnate to destroy the cruel and selfish demon kamsa every avatar has two causes the prayers of the devotees and atrocities of the wicked the unity of these two is essential any avatar to descent the incarnations before rama for example prahlada a young boy remembered the name of hari without interruption but the demon the hiranyakashipa his father his own father was a hater of lord vishnu prahlada's love for lord vishnu and hiranyakashipu's hatred for lord vishnu combined the result in narasimha to incarnate as long as the prahlada chanted the divine name of vishnu om namo narayanaya the lord protected him in what situations was he protected when he could not endure the atrocities of his father and hiranyas crimes became prahlada's protection hiranyas hatred towards lord vishnu made it possible for prahlada to acquire proximity to the lord the two factors must be present for every avatar's advent wickedness of the people and the devotion in the people so the divine pl plans conceal subtle secrets so in krishna's before krishna's descends the wickedness of kamsa and the devotion of the people the krishna 
incarnated, the avatar manifested. The Krishna's divine effulgence of this young child illuminated the surroundings. The Krishna's parents, the birth parents, Vasudeva and Devaki, go down to the child. How did they know that this is the divine child? They were told earlier that God would incarnate as their son. The Lord had appeared to them in a dream the previous night and said, I will take birth from your womb at dawn. They knew that Lord Vishnu himself has incarnated as their own son and he was God. Yet they worried as the his safety because of Kamsa, the demon Kamsa. The moment the child was born to kill that baby God in form of very infant stage, Kamsa stormed in. The delusion Maya. If the baby was God, does his protection lie in their hands? They were God parents and yet full of fear. They were put in jail by the Khamsa under the fear that the, this child would kill him once he grows up. The hands and feet were shackled with chains. The doors to the jail were made heavy iron. The gods were ferocious demons. The Lord had instructed Vasudeva, the father of the baby Krishna, to take him out. How was this to be done? Vasudeva placed the Lord in a small basket and wonderful wondered how to fulfill the command. In a trice, the chains came loose. The doors flew open in a miraculous way. It was three o'clock in the morning. The gatekeepers were fast asleep and no one else was around. Vasudeva quietly walked out of the, the jail. As he proceeded, there was a tremendous downpour, but intense joy and purity of the occasion. Even the clouds was ecstatic at the divine advent of the avatar. Balancing the basket on his head, Vasudeva walked in the direction of Gokula, but the river Yamuna flowed across his path. When the God himself walks, what can obstruct him? The Adishesha also came there and the river parted for them to proceed. At that moment, the baby girl, the Yoga Maya, born to Yashoda, who was in Gokula, who was the friend of Vasudeva's family. Everyone was asleep at Gokula. Vasudeva switched to the babies and returned. It was all done according to the divine instructions. But nobody believes till today and nobody can understand God's plans. The sports of Avatar are all beyond comprehension. In keeping the God's command, Vasudeva placed the Lord next to Yashoda's sleeping 
form and return to Madhura with the baby girl Yoga Maya. God's ways are so mysterious only after Vasudeva returned and placed the girl in Devaki arms did the jail guards woke up. The baby girl cried out loudly. Kamsa was informed of the eighth birth and Kamsa was not sleeping anyway. He was in constant torment, eager for news from the jail. Sinners always suffer for their actions in this manner. Kamsa stormed in and as usual attempted to behead the baby girl, but the baby slipped out of his grasp and flew upwards and transformed into the shun in her full glory as Yoga Maya. She exclaimed, Fool, you don't know God's will. You were vanquisher survives elsewhere. It's impossible to harm him. Recognize this truth. Vasudeva Vinashakale Viparita Buddhi meaning a concocted intelligent intellect is a sign of approaching doom. You cannot escape your destiny. God is an embodiment of karya, karana, cause and effect. You have not understood the laws of cause and effect. So saying yoga maya disappeared. So this is how the Lord Krishna was incarnated in the jail as the eighth son of Vasudeva and Devaki and was transferred to a safe place to protect from the wicked demon Kamsa, who was ready to kill him. Now, let's see the story of how Devi Meenakshi was born. The Devi Meenakshi was the mother of the cosmos, the Adi Shakti. The original source energy, who was the divine consort of Lord Paramashiva, the Sundareshwara, Meenakshi, meaning the fish eyed. Once Madurai was ruled by a king by the name Malayadhava Pandyan. His wife was. Kanchanamalai. And unfortunately, they were not blessed with the child for quite a long period. They conducted Yaga and called Putra Kamishti Yaga, Yaga, as we saw in Lord Rama's incarnation also. From that fire, Putra Kameshti Yaga, a beautiful three year old female child, was granted to them, which appeared from the fire of the Yaga spontaneously. The child had three breasts in its body, and this caused distress to the royal couple. Also, they had asked the God Almighty for a male child who could carry the affairs of the kingdom. And they besieged help from God again. There was a voice from the heaven that spoke thus Do not think that this is an ordinary female child. Nurture a, her in a way. You would treat a male child and make her the queen. And when she sees her suitor, one breast of hers will automatically disappear. 
the name the chay tadathagai and took abundant care in bringing her up at the appropriate time she was crowned the queen of madurai from that day onwards she held the scepter of royal power and ruled over madurai she was endowed with extraordinary yogic powers infinite qualities and energies also named the tad tagai means the warrior princess and angaya kanai and with the royal upbringing beyond even that of the most valiant of princes she was the queen of the blast pandyan empire headquartered at madurai city the city created by the divine couple devi meenakshi and lord sundareshwara ruling for a considerably long period she elevated as the meenakshi samrajya the rule of meenakshi with cosmic justice she elevated the meenakshi the cosmic justice not only that and extended the divine empire in all directions ruling with extraordinary administrative acumen his divine holiness bhagwan shri nityananda paramashivam reveals deeper truths behind meenakshi's birth meenakshi was not born of any mother's womb she did not assume any human body in the usual way like how we all have assumed human body meenakshi walked straight out of the home of agni the sacrificial ritualistic fire as a 3 year old child she just reduced her frequency from akashic layer the sky the space straight to the physical level she used fire as the medium understand there are five elements earth water fire air and space the beings who are living the space are enlightened beings jeevan muktas the divine beings beings who are living in the physical earth are human beings meenakshi did not assume the human human body in a normal way she used the fire as a medium if you put these two elements the earth and the water into fire it will convert into air and space anything in form offered into fire will be made formless in the same way anything in form offered into the fire will be made formless in the same way anything formless to assume form has to enter through the fire that is why swami ji had to use arunachala the fire the sacred arunachala hill the birthplace of his divine holiness where he assumed the human form represents the fire element the fire is prerequisite for the formless to assume the form for the formless to enter into the form meenakshi did the same thing there was a huge sacred fire ceremony which meenakshi has used she used that frequency and just entered the formless to form assumed the human body of a 3 year old child we also need to understand 
it is very significant information that Swamiji is revealing. Only at the age of three, the Pratyagatma Chaitanya Jagrata, which is awakening of the individual consciousness, is possible. Your bio memory and brain is mature to feel the individual existence of consciousness only at the age of three. Even in Swamiji's case, when Swamiji assumed the body, when Swamiji took the birth, the body was mature and equivalent to a three year old child. Swamiji's mother, our dear, dear Swami Amma, used to say that. Swamiji was 10 pounds, which is in Indian villages, mothers who are from Indian villages can never imagine delivering a 10 pound child because usually the Indian village mothers are malnutrition, undernourished. And Swamiji said, I am not born in a rich family. He was born in a very middle class family. And there was no special pregnancy care given to his mother. Nothing. The moment Swamiji was born, his mother said he was so huge. She felt as if he was inside for five years because only in three years, the third year, the body becomes mature. The bio memory becomes mature to feel the individual awakening of the consciousness. So Meenakshi walked straight out of the fire as a three year old child assuming the form. I don't, Swamiji said, I don't even want to use the word human body because Meenakshi's human body and human physiology was never a normal physiology. Of course, there is no question of psychology, but even her psychology, physiology was never a normal physiology. She just assumed a form, not a human body. The first and foremost form of Supreme Mother, the Divine Mother, Meenakshi, the Homa, the fire ritual was done by the Divine Rishis, the enlightened sages. Meenakshi assumed the form to elevate the human beings to the highest form, human beings to the highest existence. When Swamiji's mother was carrying him in her womb, every day his grandfather would go to the Arunachaleshwara temple and pray that Shiva should be born to him as a grandchild. But it was revealed later that his grandmother used to pray every day that Devi Meenakshi should be born to her as a grandchild. Now, Meenakshi herself has come down. The timing was ideal, in fact, for a female child's birth. It was the time of the month of Margari in January 1978 on the Chitra Nakshatra, the star. One more important thing is that when an enlightened soul, an enlightened consciousness lands on the body, for those three kshanas, three moments, the mother who is giving birth becomes enlightened. She gets the satori experience. This happened with Sri Ramakrishna, with Ramana Maharshi's mothers also. Even with his own mother, when he saw her energy, he saw very clearly 
she had the enlightenment experience when Swamiji, His Divine Holiness, took birth. Swami Amma, profoundly innocent as she is, did not know that all the gods and goddesses in Devaloka, including Vishnu and Brahma themselves, were looking upon us from the heavenly skies. 1978 marked the end of negativity once and for all. All the accumulated suffering and calamities that have happened since the end of the era were destined to evaporate. The entire universe rejoiced as Sadashiva descended from Kailasa in all his grandeur for the next yet another Leela on planet Earth. All the Gandharvas, the Munis, and even the Asuras and the dwellers of the netherworld were all watching, waiting eagerly for the birth of the avatar of Sadar Shiva, who would be called His Divine Holiness, Sri Nityananda Paramashiva. Now, we can all hear about His conscious birth from Swamiji Himself. Parmashivoham Om Nityananda Parmashivoham Om Nityananda Parmashivoham Om Nityananda Parmashivoham Nothing else. I was conscious. I was alive. And I know I was alive. And I was just enjoying that I am alive. I exist. Suddenly, in a very, very vague way, one small light, please understand I am explaining frame by frame what happened during my birth. During my birth, frame by frame what happened, I am explaining for biography. Later on I will explain the every frame. The first frame was a light. A light in somewhere around South India, Southern India. But I was not, I do not know at that moment it was Arunachala or something like that. Just somewhere around Southern India. That was the first slide, first scene. The next scene, like a star, shooting star. I was just pulled by that light. The second scene was like a shooting star. I entered into that light. The third scene in my consciousness was the Arunachala. By now, I know I have already taken the body. I have already taken the body. I am inside the body. It was around 11.45, January 1st, 1978. Then it took around 40 to 45 minutes for me to settle into the body and come out. So according to doctors, the time is something like 12.30. But according to me, 11.45. 11.45 of January 1st. That was the time. First, the Arunachala appeared in the consciousness, in the inner space. And the moment I saw the Arunachala in the inner space, I know the body is, I have assumed the body. Or I have entered into the body.
it was such an auspicious energy whenever a master lands on the planet earth a clairvoyance happens like how they say now the holes in the ozone layer something like that the conscious layer is drilled for a enlightened being to land i can describe this scene like a whenever a clairvoyance lands on the planet earth whole planet earth celebrates the whole existence celebrates that is what they describe metaphysically all the gods and goddesses land and celebrated the krishna's birth that is what they mean when they say these great masters and they took birth all the gods and goddesses showered flowers they landed and celebrate this is what they mean means such an auspicious energy happens on the planet earth the whole existence celebrates the whole existence celebrates somehow in my case not only gods and goddesses people all over the world were celebrating because it was a new year <laughs> it was a new year all over the world were celebrating already not only the gods and goddesses because such an auspicious energy lands on the planet earth this is impossible to describe because whenever a clairvoyance happens on the planet earth using the same hole same opening you can also escape the possibility for beings to get enlightened see the same door only whether to come here or from here to go there same door only when the door opens you can sneak in or sneak out there is a possibility you can take a jump that is why we use all the birthdays or the jayanti days we call it as jayanti not birth please understand whenever we mention the birthday of an enlightened master we don't call that as a birth date jayanti jayanti means they visited they came not taking birth they came that is why we call jayanti means in sanskrit literally going going that is the word means because the master visit the planet is called jayanti we use the master's jayantis to meditate because the clairvoyance creates a possibility for you to take a quantum jump possibility for all of us listening to swami ji speaking about his own birth is literally an initiation into that very conscious experience for all of us human beings today his divine holiness swami ji is reviving the science of bringing down enlightened beings but first let us understand what is missing in our current day society to create enlightened beings a highly significant indicator of the health of a society is in its schooling system how we are training 
our young to inherit the world after shows us a lot about how we ourselves are living how we teach them at the young age how we nurture them through their struggles and influence them with the standard that we set for ourselves often goes unconsidered by parents and their community not only these key points are forgotten but the very strong foundation of the healthy and loving relationship between parents is also neglected and unprovided for the child basic requirements for the entry of a new life into the world is largely unmet and even disregarded in the modern day divorce rates are ranging from 40 to 50% and many of them are happening while the children of the family are still growing up this goes to show that while the media is inserting false perceptions about love long term relationships and marriage into the younger generation when it comes to real relationships we are all falling behind the ideal and it's having seriously harmful effect the entire mindset surrounding relationships must change otherwise we leave our kids with a divorce filled unhappy future ahead of them the truth is that the continuous stress and pressure of divorce of the divorce process gives kids today a terrible outlook on relationships marriages and the effects of divorce in child are widely known and even worse are the effects of a broken marriage held together by its pieces causing violent circumstances at home there is no denying that the most unstable and insensitive people of our world who are waiting in the death row and cells of prison institutions all over the world have come from homes infiltrated by immense anger and violence statistics say that over 70% of the world's worst criminals have in fact seen domestic violence at home this makes the need for a safe loving home at the beginning of a child's life necessary in more ways than we can even understand right now in hinduism the need the context is not just to nurture the children to succeed in society but to enlighten them it is to enlighten them and bring about the next shift in consciousness as the entire civilization hindus take on the responsibility to make each child ready to experience deeper and deeper levels of oneness with the entire cosmos from the preconception environment to the very end of your life and the cremation of your body hinduism guides the process of your life the garbhopanishad records the earliest understanding of conception pregnancy and birth this surprising fact is that what is written in the ancient scriptures matches what modern day science has researched over the last century the word from the garbha upanishad about bringing to life the vedic science of conscious birthing says यदि प्रमुंचा सांख्यम योग सश्रिए अशुभक्षयकर्ता फल मुक्ति प्रदायक यदि प्रमुंचा तम प्रपद्ये महेश्वर अशुभक्षयकर्ता फल मुक्ति प्रदायक ट्रांसलेशन वेन आई कम आउट ऑफ दिस वूम I will take refuge in Sankhya Yoga 
which destroys misery and yields liberation. When I get out of this womb, I will take refuge in Maheshwara, Shiva, who destroys misery and grants liberation. This is the fourth verse of the Garbhopanishad. The family's fulfillment and readiness for the new life to happen is followed through with the utmost importance. And pregnancy is a program offered by His Divine Holiness Bhagavan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam that literally brings enlightened beings to the planet. And pregnancy is a revival of the Vedic science of creating a new generation of enlightened human beings. It empowers parents to be genetic engineers of their baby and through the end and parenting program, perceiving pregnancy as a conscious choice and not just as an accident. Let us watch a video on the end pregnancy and the work of His Divine Holiness to create new enlightened beings. Hiranyakashipu was a powerful demon king. To attain the power to vanquish Lord Narayana, he went to pray to Lord Brahma. At that time, his wife Kayatu was pregnant. Lord Indra knew about it and he dragged Kayatu out of her home in the intention of killing her baby. Sage Narada came just in time and rescued her. Kayatu requested Narada to let her stay in his ashram until the child was born. At the hermitage, Kayatu had no opportunity to witness any violent things. Instead, she heard only Lord Vishnu's stories narrated by Narada. Her entire lifestyle had also changed from that of a demon queen to serving the sage in all humility and gratitude. Thus, Prahlada, the son of a demon king, was born as a virtuous being ever to live. End Pregnancy Care Conscious Conception Conscious Pregnancy Conscious Birthing Conscious Parenting Most mothers in their unawareness sow the wrong patterns into the baby's body as biomemories. The very moment a couple decide to have a baby, they have sown a seed of conscious parenting in them. What exactly is her role as a mother? Her responsibility, her active contribution in this beautiful journey. Can she alter the genetic expression in the baby? Can she teach the baby in the womb? Does the intelligence of the baby also lie in her hands? The answer to all these and more is what end pregnancy care attempts to provide. The essence of end pregnancy care works towards consciously creating a beautiful body of the baby with positive biomemories. In other words, creating the perfect receptacle by the parents to be for a conscious landing of an intelligent soul. All the Vedic practices offered in this program have a scientific basis behind them for an intellectual understanding. Interactive workshops provide a clear understanding to live a conflict-free lifestyle through the breaking of strong patterns which govern one's life. The program works towards consciously handling every pattern and emotion in the mother on the one side with her getting established in positive emotions on the other. All your patterns, concepts, idea that only makes the other person look wrong. Your fantasies only makes the other person look wrong. It is time you understand and alter your patterns. Look into the depths of your being and transform you. A clear understanding about Vedic marriage is given to help the couple to attain fulfillment in their relationship, ultimately taking them beyond it. It speaks of conscious parenting and creating the perfect environment, a home and not a house. 
Listening to special music during pregnancy brings about enhanced attention spans, improved sleep patterns, increased cognitive development and sharper language skills in the baby. In the mother, music reduces the stress, anxiety and depression.